What's up, world? It's Christian Pavlovich. I'm your host of the Javelin Breakdown Show, the show where we cover all things Javelin. And today we're going to cover the collegiate Javelin throwers, talking about what I expect to see this season, talk about breakout stars from last season, discuss what they might do this year. I'll share with you my dark horse picks for people that might make some noise this season and just some fun facts and things in between covering the collegiate Javelin throwers. So let's jump right into it. So to kick off the show, I want to talk about last year's breakout star, who in my opinion is Ethan Dabbs. Ethan coming off of an injury, uh, opened his season with an easy 71 meter throw off of just a few crossovers going very casually down the runway, if I do say so myself. And I think that was a sign for things to come because he was able to go over 80 meters the following meet when he went off a full approach. Following meet was the conference championship where he went 82-93, I believe. His PR throw and then he had a strong regional performance and was able to take second at NCAAs. Mark Minicello had a really strong performance and took the win there um, but Ethan was able to bounce back and in his sixth round effort at USA's he takes the win with an 81 meter throw. Uh, goes to world championships and gets some experience a tough qualifying round but bounces back again to get third at NACACs. So just a tremendous year for someone coming back from injury to PR by such a margin and make an impact not just in the college scene but at the professional level. It's amazing uh, in track and field how many collegiate athletes make an impact in the professional world. So just a tremendous season from Ethan. Really excited to see what he can do this year. If you didn't know, Ethan's coach from the previous couple seasons, Martin Marich, is now at USC. So uh, Virginia has a new throws coach. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out and contributes to Ethan's season as well as others at Virginia. But I have no doubt he's in good hands and his fall and winter videos on Instagram show no signs of him slowing down. So really excited to see what Ethan can do this year. So next up, we're going to talk about Mark Minicello. As I said, Mark won NCAAs, and so he peaked when it mattered, and he was able to go 80 meters at regionals and 81 to take the title. So a real credit to him there, and just really growing through last season. And so I believe coming into last season, he had 79 meters as his PR, uh, and he started, I think he opened his season with like a 74, and so just kind of progressing uh, and peaking when it mattered for the college season. So it'll be interesting to see this year, can he defend his title? And then can he prolong that quality throwing into USA's and make a world team potentially? So really exciting to see what he can do there. Uh, an important note with Mark is that he's no longer at uh, University of Pennsylvania. He is at Georgia. He's in a graduate program. So it'll be interesting to see how that maybe helps him because he has more time or less time. I'm not sure what his, his schedule looks like and whatnot, but just a fun fact, he is going to be a bulldog this year. So he's joining Matt Bowling and and quite the crew that they've got down at Georgia. So we'll see what kind of season Mark has this year. I'm excited. If my count is correct, last year over 28 men passed the 70 meter mark and 21 are returning. So it's an extremely deep field. So I'm gonna try to go through some other names here. Namandi is a sophomore at Baylor and he has multiple throws over 80 meters. So look for him to be a contender. Arthur Peterson is now at Nebraska. Um, he's gonna be in contention for, cert for sure. You got Tazuriel Pedego. Tazario Padego won NCAAs two years ago with the 76, and he's since improved and thrown 78-90 at last year's NCAAs to take third. So, uh, you know, going from first to third is frustrating, but improving by two meters or so is not. That's excellent. So I expect to see him uh, continue to push that top group. Uh, Ty Hampton at Oregon, probably the biggest jump, uh, just broad distance-wise, going from 71-78 to 77-08. So look for him to try to stay in that mix of top guys. Um, so I could go on and on. There's a bunch of guys, like I said, I think 21 returning guys over 70 meters. So it's going to be really exciting to see how the season shakes out. So now we're going to talk about my dark horse, which for the men's side is Mike Stein. He's a freshman at Iowa, and he's doing everything he can to optimize his javelin throwing. And so if you haven't heard of him, check out his Instagram. Check out what he's doing with his training, with his recovery. Kid's just going way deep and committed to the max and so really a credit to him for his uh, commitment and his um, 
forward thinking, uh, just looking to how can I make the most of, of my time here and, and he's connecting with just so many people in the community to get insight and input into his training. So, you know, it's really cool in this age of technology that he was able to develop into a 190 plus foot thrower in high school in Iowa where there isn't high school throwing and he was able to just pick that up and, and learn from the internet, learn from the community of people here. And he's leveraging that and has gotten so much better and is just extremely flexible. His run-up's coming along real nice. He looks really good. So again, really excited. I have no idea what he's gonna throw, but I'm sure it's gonna be exciting. Switching gears and talking about the ladies. Uh, leading the charge is going to be your defending champ, Ashton Reiner out of BYU. I hope to see her surpass the 200 foot mark this year, but she's definitely going to be pushed as there's a number of ladies close on her heels. Uh, although the depth from a big number standpoint on the women's side, I don't think it's the same as the men. The number of women who are towards the top is and are throwing you know, near professional or professional level distances, depending on your opinion on what that looks like, I think is higher than uh, in years past. Is there were two ladies over 60 meters last year, and I think that number could go up uh, going into this year. If you don't follow, the BYU uh, team has a throws Instagram, and so they keep things interesting and share their training there. And so just uh, seems like a great crew. It's always important to have a solid training crew, and they've definitely got that going on there. So check out that Instagram. You can see what's going on with the rest of their crew. Close behind. Ashton is Madison Wiltrout, and so Madison has the high school national record at 184 and change, and she, I think the expectations coming into college, you know, you have a 184, you have a 50, I think five meter throw coming into college, like, you know, expectations are pretty high, and she was able to, to hit 55 each year uh, in her freshman year. Uh, she took third at NCAAs, but then the following year was, was more challenging. Um, but then this past year, just really strong and just climbing with each meet and breaking 60 meters at ACC's and then having a strong performance at NCAA's to take second. So I look forward to her closing out her college career and pushing for the top. Another exciting thrower is going to be Maddie Harris out of Nebraska. So she got third last year at NCAA's and check out her tefers. She is really good at all four throws, but last year she decided to focus on just the javelin and it paid off. So coming into another year with just the javelin on her docket, I'm really excited to see what she can do. And she has Maggie Harden Malone in her corner. So Maggie is a, a volunteer throws coach on staff there as she trains herself as a very accomplished javelin throw, a former American record holder. We'll see if she brings that back in the next couple years. I'm excited to see what she can do. And uh, with her in Maddie's corner, uh, excited to see what Maddie can do this season. Just a fun fact on, on the women's side, Missouri, I think, has the deepest javelin squad, period. Uh, they have seven women returning who have thrown over 40 meters, not counting Skylar Cinclioni. So with Skylar, as a 56 meter thrower, hopefully coming back and competing this year, that would put them, if the other seven do well, eight women over 40 meters and probably more, including her sister Taylor, who threw 46 last year. So just super awesome that there's that many good throwers on that team. They've got quite the squad. They have awesome uh, setup. Uh, so hopefully you're looking at some clips here of them throwing on their indoor track. Super cool. I wish I had a setup like that when I was at Messiah. Really cool. So credit to their team, their coaches, for developing such a solid training group. Wrapping things up on the women's side, my dark horse is going to be Audrey Friedman. She's a freshman at Penn State. So Audrey is your 2021 PIAA AA state champion in the Javelin. She just threw 46 meters at the inner squad meet in January. It's called the Blue and White meet at Penn State. A number of Penn State throwers did really well actually at this uh, inner squad meet. Colin Burkhart PR'd his Javelin throwing 69 meters. But so Audrey, 46 meters in January. I just have a strong feeling that she's going to be able to do even more than that. And so really excited what she's going to do this year and moving forward into the future. So two freshmen as my dark horses for people that might shake things up in the Javelin world. So that wraps up the first episode of the Javelin Breakdown Show. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on what the college season might look like and who's going to make some noise. If I missed anyone, I apologize. Go out and throw far and shut me up. I'm an idiot for forgetting you. <laughs> but I just made this for fun, right? So hopefully uh, no hard feelings. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you want to see an episode two where I cover the professional world and uh, what the world championships might bring, which will include some of these college javelin throwers, I'm sure. Um, college kids always find a way to sneak somebody in. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you want to see that, comment down below. Like and subscribe. And always remember to enjoy the journey.